For the last several years, healthcare businesses across all sectors have identified talent acquisition, retention, and preventing turnovers as one of the biggest collective pains in all of their operations. And this is the case because on average, a United States company will have about 15% turnover annually. So if you haven't seen that yet, you might want to get ready for a mass exodus unless you take measures to prevent it. On average, a single turnover will cost about 30% of that position's full-time equivalent salary. And that's just at the staff level. At floor management or supervisorial tasks, they are rated at about 80% of their full-time equivalent salary to replace, and middle and upper management is well over 250% of that annual salary. Turnover is an amazingly expensive problem, but there are ways to solve it. But surprise, surprise, has very little to do with incentives. In fact, there is a lot of evidence that mounts against using incentives alone to try to keep people to stay within a company. For more on that, you should look at one of our podcast guests, Daniel Pink, and his TED Talk, which will be linked below. So, if incentives isn't the answer, what is? Well, the answer is culture. People remain and are engaged to work at a company because of that company's culture. And there are three primary dimensions that will keep your healthcare providers and clinicians engaged. Number one, foster a culture of excellence. Mediocrity is the enemy when it comes to people being fully engaged as clinical providers. Your company needs to channel excellence in both clinical and other elements of being a professional, which may include business management, leadership tracks, legacy, and legislative advocacy. Number two, create a culture of equitability. While all things will never truly be equal per se, what you can make them is equitable. And by doing that, you need to make sure that communications are transparent and expectations are clearly written out. This way, employees and team members will feel like they're part of the process rather than a victim of somebody upstairs telling them this is how it's gonna be. Finally, number three, employ a culture of empowerment. Now, a culture of empowerment doesn't mean that you just give your employees and your team members everything they want. If they want to move up in the leadership track, they have to earn it. If they want to have better pay or have preferential scheduling or to work with certain patient populations, they have to earn it. Having a culture of empowerment means that you give your team members full control over their futures. Their destinies are literally in their hands because of the other values of equitability and excellence. All these expectations of what you can do within the company, how you can grow into an organization are clearly defined. So it's on them on how they want to craft their own career paths. So if your company needs to strategize about talent acquisition and retention, let us know. Send us a note, send us a message, and we'd love to get in touch. Until next time, I'm Dr. Ben Fung with UpDoc Media with the content you need to know delivered with clinical precision. See you soon.